Hi, Jerry Jenkins here talking about all things writing. Today, about tone in writing. The right tone is crucial to any story, helping to emotionally convey your message the most effective way to engage readers. But what exactly is tone? Why does it matter? And how can you use it most effectively? That's what I want to try to teach you in this video. If you're confused about the difference between voice and tone, you're not alone. Whether you're writing a novel, a blog post, an article, a poem, it's important to know the difference so you can communicate with readers in a way that resonates. Your writing voice reflects who you are, your unique personality, and your character, and that should flavor everything you write. Tone, on the other hand, is the attitude with which you write it. In other words, voice is what you say and how you say it, while tone is how you feel when you say it. Let's say one of your characters is late for a meeting. His boss might ask, are you always this punctual? The boss is obviously being sarcastic, but his tone will indicate whether he's lighthearted about this or truly angry. Are you always this punctual? John asked with a smile. Or are you always this punctual? John asked, slamming a book on his desk. The tone you choose should fit the overall mood of your story. You'll confuse readers, for example, if you use an overly formal tone in a scene that's meant to be fun. So how do you set the right tone? First, know your purpose. Are you writing a romance, a thriller, a cozy mystery, or something else, perhaps even nonfiction? Based on your genre, decide how you want your reader to feel. Do you want them warm and fuzzy or on the edge of their seats? That, needless to say, will influence the tone you choose. So next, you'll want to choose the best way to convey your desired emotion. Tone can be communicated through word choice, descriptive language, punctuation, pacing, sentence structure, and more. These all help readers understand your intentions and connect with your story or nonfiction premise. So what tones are available to you? The following is not an exhaustive list, but you can be formal, informal, optimistic, pessimistic, joyful, sad, encouraging, discouraging, inspiring, critical, sincere, insincere, genuine, hypocritical, fearful, brave, shocking, boring, nervous, calm, hopeful, hopeless, humorous, or serious. There's no right or wrong. Just be consistent. Your tone can vary with every character and scene, but the overall tone of your story must remain consistent to keep from confusing readers. Now, let's look at some examples of tone in popular writing. First, the poem, The Road Not Taken, by Robert Frost. By the way, Frost coined one of my favorite writing adages, speaking of tone. He said, no tears in the writer, no tears in the reader. Notice how he starts perhaps his most famous poem on a hopeful, contemplative note. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Now, by the end, he switched to reflection and positivity. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, that is one beautiful example of tone, as is our next sample, The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. In this story, Hemingway affects a tone of loneliness, sadness, and defeat. Discouragement, at least on the part of the boy. And if you're not familiar with this novella, you should be. So I urge you to get it on your must-read list. In it, you'll also be able to deduce what's not said 
and catch the tone of courage or expectation on the part of the old man. After all, who continues to fish day after day when, they're, when they've caught nothing for that long? How long? Here's how Hemingway begins the tale. He was an old man who fished alone in a skiff in the Gulf Stream, and he had gone 84 days now without taking a fish. In the first 40 days, a boy had been with him. But after 40 days without a fish, the boy's parents had told him that the old man was now definitely and finally salao, which is the worst form of unlucky, and the boy, at their orders, had gone into another boat which caught three good fish the first week. It made the boy sad to see the old man come in each day with his skiff, empty, and he always went down to help him carry either the coiled lines or the gaff and harpoon and the sail that was furled around the mast. The sail was patched with flour sacks and furled, it looked like, the flag of permanent defeat. Now, if you can't get a feel for the tone in that opener, I'm not sure I can help you. Now, I realize my examples come from the all-time greats um, in literature, but they can teach us a lot, can't they? Okay, one more. In The Horse and His Boy, C.S. Lewis writes the following passage with a clear tone of self-pity and sadness that shifts to fear. I do think, said Shasta, that I must be the most unfortunate boy who ever lived in the whole world. Everything goes right for everyone except me. I was left behind. I was the one who was sent on. I got left out. And being very tired and having nothing inside him, he felt so sorry for himself that the tears rolled down his cheeks. What put a stop to all this was a sudden fright. Shasta discovered that someone or somebody was walking beside him. It was pitch dark, and he could hardly hear any footfalls. What he could hear was breathing. His invisible companion seemed to breathe on a very large scale, and Shasta got the impression that it was a very large creature, and he had come to notice this breathing so gradually that he had really no idea how long it had been there. It was a horrible shock. All right, we're not Robert Frost, Ernest Hemingway, or C.S. Lewis. So how do we develop tone in writing? How do you fix something that falls flat? Three things to keep in mind. First, you're, remember your readers. Every reader matters. Write in a straightforward, friendly manner as if you're conversing over coffee. Keep it real. Choose normal words over fancy ones. Notice how the literary giants didn't try to impress you with their vocabularies and turns of phrases. Next, layer in details. Rather than making description an entirely separate element, trigger the theater of your reader's mind by layering it into the action. I've written a blog dedicated to this idea alone, and you can access it at the URL on your screen here jerryjenkins.com. And you can also find this in what we call related resources below. So click on that. And finally, develop tone in your writing by injecting conflict. Avoid a story that falls flat by creating what author Bridget McNulty calls an ebb and flow of tension. By plunging your main character into terrible trouble from the get-go, you'll introduce conflict and spend the rest of your story trying to remedy the situation. Choosing the right tone will only strengthen your story and bring it to life. Now, if you found this video helpful, please like it, leave a comment, share it, and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to become an even better writer, be sure to take my writing assessment. You can find it by going to jerryjenkins.com forward slash quiz. That's jerryjenkins.com forward slash quiz or by clicking the link in the description below. All the best with your writing, and I'll see you next time.